let's take a look at the concepts of bankruptcy and insolvency. Now, oftentimes these are used together, but they're not the same thing. Insolvency is defined as a financial condition where a legal entity, and by that we mean, for example, a corporation, or a person's liabilities exceeds their assets. And we sometimes refer to this as balance sheet insolvency. Okay, or when a legal entity or person can no, lo no longer meet their debt obligations on time as they become due. And we sometimes refer to this as cash flow insolvency. Now, insolvency can lead to bankruptcy, but it doesn't have to. Sometimes these things get worked out. Let's say a company or an individual that may have some cash flow insolvency, that may be temporary. A person may have lost their job. They have some cash flow insolvency. They um, call up their bank or their other creditors and perhaps um, work out a, a different repayment plan. And once they start working again, they start paying again. So no bankruptcy takes place. So it isn't always the case that insolvency leads to bankruptcy. It can, but it doesn't have to. Bankruptcy, on the other hand, is defined as a successful legal procedure that resulted from one of the following. Remember, this is a legal action, an application to the relevant court by a legal entity, again, a corporation, um, or a person in order to have themselves declared bankrupt. So an individual or a company could go to the courts and declare for bankruptcy. You may also have an application to the relevant court by a creditor of a legal entity or a person in order to have the legal entity or person declared bankrupt. So, um, you know, if, if uh, another company owes my company money, I'm not getting paid, I may go to the court and try and get the court to um, declare them bankrupt. Okay, also a special resolution which a legal entity files with the registrar of companies in order to be declared bankrupt. Okay, so these are all legal proceedings. So, you know, we talk about bankruptcy, but bankruptcy is an actual legal action. Now, let's talk about some of the most common ones. You hear a lot of these, you know, Chapter 7. Chapter 7 of the Bankruptcy Code um, is a liquidation. That means it's the sale of the debtor's non-exempt property and the distribution of the proceeds to creditors. Okay, there may be some exempt property depending on the state. Some states may exempt um, an individual's home from the bankruptcy proceeding, so they may be able to keep their home. But whatever is non-exempt gets divvied up and distributed to creditors. Okay, uh, this does not involve the filing of a plan of repayment as in Chapter 13. Okay, so there's no plan to repay, there's a plan to liquidate everything you have, everything that's not, not exempt, and to pay um, your, the creditors in some sort of order. Now, some, some creditors may be um, in front of other creditors, or depending on um, the state or the, um, um, the bankruptcy rules, who gets paid what. Um, also, the bankruptcy trustee gathers and sells the debtor's non-exempt assets and uses the proceeds of such assets to pay holders of claims in accordance with the provisions of the bankruptcy code. So that's basically what we just said. So, you know, stuff gets sold and then the money gets paid out in some sort of order. You know, perhaps uh, um, employees, if it were a business, get paid first, okay, and bondholders last. I mean, there's some sort of order in which they get paid. Okay, um, the debtor may be an individual, a partnership, a corporation, okay, some other type of business entity. Okay, another popular one you hear about is referred to as Chapter 11. Uh, Chapter 11 of the United States Bankruptcy Code is uh, frequent, frequently referred to as a reorganization bankruptcy. Okay. What do we mean by reorganization? Sometimes you hear about that. You know, the company is reorganizing. Um, unless the court orders otherwise, the debtor also must file with the court schedules of assets and liabilities, uh, a schedule of current income and expenditures. And so there's going to be some sort of reorganization. Sometimes uh, bondholders 
claims get converted to stock. All right, there's going to be, you know, some of the debtors are going to lose out again based on what the uh, laws of the state and the federal government uh, require. But there are certain certain rules in terms of this reorganization. Okay, um, there's also going to be a, a schedule of executory contracts and unexpired leases and a statement of financial affairs. So there's some information that has to be given to the court and this is typically used to reorganize a business which might be a corporation, a sole proprietorship, or a partnership. And, and there are many companies that have gone through this and they've actually re-emerged um, as successful companies but they may have some some legacy debt and they, they just they can't get out of it, so they have a plan to reorganize. Um, General Motors went through, you know, something like this when the federal government bought their stock. They reorganized. Okay, labor had to give back some stuff. Um, you know, um, retirees had to give back something. Uh, bondholders had to give back something, and then they reorganized the company. And then actually, they came out of bankruptcy and had a public offering. Chapter 13 is another well-known term you hear about, and sometimes this is referred to as a wage earner's plan. Okay, so 7 and 13 deal with individuals. Um, this enables individuals with regular income to develop a plan to repay all or part of their debts. Okay, debtors propose a repayment plan to make installments to creditors over three to five years. Um, one of the reasons that homeowners may choose Chapter 13 as opposed to Chapter 7 is it offers individuals an opportunity to save their homes from foreclosure. So it may be better for them to renegotiate with creditors. And, and, and in most cases, banks and other financial institutions don't really want to take over someone's home. What they really want to do is have a plan to get back some of their money. And Chapter 13 may be a better choice. Okay, a couple other um, chapters that you may not be familiar with. Chapter 9 deals with municipality bankruptcy. Okay, you don't hear that too much. You always hear about 7, um, 11, and 13. Chapter 12 deals with family farmer or family fisherman bankruptcies. Uh, chapter 15 deals with ancillary and other cross-border cases. And... SCRA or the Service Members Civil Relief Act provides some pr protection for active duty military. So, you know, oftentimes, and you may have, you may have heard some of the stories on the news where um, somebody in the family is deployed overseas, and you know the the family is having trouble making ends meet. Well, there's some protection for them while this person is on active duty, and the purpose of this is. We obviously don't want our military uh, to be sitting there in a combat zone worrying about whether their spouse is able to, is going to lose the house or not. You want them focused solely on protecting our country so they have this act. So this is an overview of some of the different uh, forms of bankruptcy. Again, seven is a liquidation, and so an individual can liquidate, but so can a, so can a company. Um, and the other two, 11 is a reorganization for corporations, and 13, in some ways, is a reorganization for an individual. Okay, It's a repayment plan where the individual tries to pay back as best they can what they owe to creditors. And in many cases, creditors are happier about that than simply you know, taking over the assets and just distributing all of them.